Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Kenneth. Good afternoon. So you're uh, in the uh, Sierra Foothill area. I had a friend of mine that used to pan for gold in that area somewhere. Can I get a uh, sound check to make sure that everybody can hear me all right? Adolph, Barry, Bob, Chris, Charles, Craig, Dave, Don. Nice seeing you, Don. Doug, Fred, Guy. Oh, people are still jumping in and losing track to where I'm at. Kenneth, Melissa. All right, sounds good. Now, how'd you do today there, Rick, uh, Fred? How'd everybody do today? I was up and down, up and down. Uh, finally ended up uh, today with, uh, we'll look at that here a little later, uh, 223.75. All right. If you'd like, go ahead and put in where you're at. Yeah, up and down. Uh, take a look at the disclaimer here. This is for educational purposes only. I am not a financial advisor by any means at all whatsoever. I am a full-time futures trader. I do dabble a little bit here and there in stocks and ETFs. Uh, not that much, but uh, I still watch them and uh, put trades in if I see a, a good deal coming in. John, Texas. Uh, just remember that uh, trading is risky and you can lose money in it, so don't risk money that you can't afford to lose. Power trade trading format. Go over this real quick. This is a 20-minute uh, trading session on a new topic every week. Live trade for 10 minutes, around 2 o'clock. Join me in a 20-minute interactive mastermind afterwards. Is this microphone on? If your computer has a working microphone, you may be asked to join the conversation during the mastermind. Uh, your participation is very important and will help accelerate your learning curve. Each mastermind includes wins. Tell us about your best trades of the week so far. Lessons. What did you learn this week that would benefit others? Uh, Q&A, uh, what can we help clarify that will help you be a better trader? About investing, established in early 2009, we've helped thousands of traders like you in over 53 countries around the world. Our focus is to help you get real world profits without risking hard earned cash. We do this via our six step profitability path so you can learn in a virtually risk-free and stress-free environment. Uh, for more information, go to www.investing.com. About your host, Ted Posobiec, that's me, Chief Trading Strategist at Winvesting.com, professional day trader, primary leaf futures. I also host uh, the daily e-mini insider trading room at Winvesting. Quick uh, housekeeping notes, replays. We are recording this and we'll post the replays as soon as possible. Participate, your active participation will help reinforce what you've learned. Suggest, send topics in for future power trades to support at winvesting.com. Like to hear what you'd like to go over. Part one, the training, the trade room, Tactics, how to get the best results from live trade rooms. Overview, how to choose the right trade room. Be your own reviewer, track records, trust but verify. Learning the trades, make, your, make the trades your own and get help. What not to do. How to choose the right trading room. Everybody has this problem, everybody wants to jump around but uh, I have been in several at the beginning. I'm still in some. Uh, I have lifetime memberships in uh, quite a few of them. Uh, but I was jumping around, uh, and I started looking at <clears throat> different things later on once I found rooms that I didn't like and ones that I did. Uh, start with uh, which trading strategy you want to focus on first. Future stocks, options, forex, binary op options, et cetera. Uh, I was in a options, uh, maybe two or three different option uh, rooms. Uh, then I went into 
uh, futures and tried to do both of them at the same time. Stocks, I've been doing that for years anyway. Uh, that was a, to me, that was a no brainer on my part. Uh, there was a learning curve there also, but uh, trying to do two of those at the same time is uh, was pretty much uh, a non-winner for me. Uh, so don't try to be a jack of all trades uh, and a master of none. In other words, if you're trying to master futures and stocks and options and Forex at the same time, you'll never be great at one of them. Uh, that's when I went straight into uh, futures. I found it a lot easier, uh, something that I understood more. Uh, and I do dabble, I try to dabble in the options. I'm looking at uh, weekly options again. Uh, but I'm not spending that much time on them. But don't try to do it all. Uh, even in a particular uh, futures trading type scenario, don't try to master every single thing that's out there. Uh, find a list of trading rooms that match the strategy you want to master first. Spend at least one day in each, each of these rooms. Uh, some of these may have a trial and some may require a membership. Uh, think of this as your first pass to a pre-screen uh, to find the right room for you. Uh, I'm not just talking with my room, I'm talking any room that you go to. I'm trying to help you out to find uh, what's best for you. So this, this applies to everything. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, how to choose the, the right room, uh, we're continuing with this. Uh, some rooms identify themselves by trading levels. Uh, you'll have a beginner, uh, intermediate, and advanced section. So choose the level that best matches your trading experience. When I got in, I went right straight to the advanced. I skipped the beginner and intermediate, and it uh, showed in my trading. And until I went back uh, with the uh, the room that had the beginner, intermediate, and advanced, uh, I, I went back into the beginning side, and I started right from the beginning. Uh, if I go into another room, sign up for another room, or a package where they have all of this, I, I start right at the beginning. I don't care if it's something I already know. I want to I want to watch everything, watch them do everything the way that they do it. Uh, so if they don't have a beginner, intermediate, and advanced, uh, ask to make sure uh, they do trades at your level. Some of these rooms uh, don't really uh, specify. I don't have a beginner, intermediate, or advanced uh, area there, but there are beginner trades, intermediate trades, and advanced trades. So <clears throat> if you're... Uh, trying to do a, an advanced trade and you're just beginning, you could get hurt really bad there. So uh, ask, ask what trade it is uh, to find out if that's gonna be your level. Uh, some of the trade setups uh, take a little longer uh, if there is only one trade setup or a, a room that has uh, like a, a trend trade with uh, uh, using volume. Uh, candles or uh, range candles. Uh, some of those are, a lot of them are, are really uh, pull back, find the areas that they're getting in uh, without going to at least the beginning of the course. Uh, you, you may skip, uh, miss something of what they're actually looking for and how they're getting into that trade. Uh, get a feel for whatever the room or monitor guru has your best interest in mind. Uh, I want to make sure everybody learns something. Uh, so you, you need to ask the questions. If you're lost, ask. Ask the monitor. Uh, do they call trades out in advance? That's one thing that I try to do. Uh, sometimes they're pretty quick. Some of my trades on a more advanced side, uh, you're going to hear that trade as soon as I get into it. <clears throat> so uh, that's that's something that uh, some monitor, uh, moderators will call advanced uh, trades out, but they don't show their their screen where they actually got in. Uh, 
uh, you want to be able to see this. Um, that way you can learn how to how they're getting into the trade and uh, it helps you identify where you're at in the learning part. If they're doing something different, you need to ask. Uh, do they answer your questions patiently? Uh, that's another one. If they're irritable or uh, it just doesn't sound right to you on the way that they're answering your questions, you might want to think about uh, trying to find someone else. At this point, don't worry about uh, much about the profit and loss. All rooms have bad days, and uh, instead focus on whether you would like this guru as your mentor, yes or no, and eliminate the no's. Uh, you don't really want to be in a room that you uh, you you can't identify with the moderator. He's uh, he might be a uh, a little off. To some, but in, then to some others, they they're they're real good. So pick one out uh, again with the uh, uh, profit and losses. Uh, all rooms have them. I have my bad days. Uh, sometimes it could be a, a pretty bad week, but uh, if it's something that you like, you like about everything else about it. Uh, it might be something to put on your yes side uh, to go through again and, and take a look at. Uh, for your uh, second pass through, now that you have narrowed down the list of rooms, spend at least five days in each room of, of the potential rooms. Trying to see how I can put this. Uh, once you've narrowed it down, go into the room. It does take time. Let's try to spend five days in, in, in the room. Uh, again, everyone has bad days, so uh, anything less than five days, it's hard to judge how, uh, how much it is now are, are they up at all uh, do they keep running their uh, losses down uh, to where uh, it's unbearable uh, for you to uh, take uh, see if they're running uh, one contract three contracts five contracts it doesn't matter don't look at that look at what you can trade yourself what you can afford to lose and uh, if the guy's consistently losing $1,000 a day, I would, uh, I'd walk away because I'm not going to lose $1,000 a day. I've had days where I've lost, uh, lost quite a bit, brought it, was able to bring it back and uh, maybe even close the room down with a, a loss of $300 or uh, sometimes uh, 57, 27, and whatever. Uh, keeping the losses to a bare minimum. That's something that you'll have to do on your own once you learn how to how to do the trading itself. Don't expect everything to make perfect sense right away. At time, it takes weeks to feel for the trade room. Uh, different rooms, uh, are, of course, everyone is different. Everyone runs theirs a little different. Uh, I jump from one trade sec uh, se uh, section to another, uh, but everything is pretty much on time. Uh, I have trades from 8 o'clock to uh, 8.45, 9 o'clock to 9.30, and then 9.30 to 10 o'clock. So I, I try to bring everything in, and I can run uh, a few things together at the same time. That's the way I like to do it. But, you know, don't expect everything to be perfect, uh, to make perfect sense uh, right away. It does take time to get used to it. Uh, in the second pass, you're looking for what the res what results the uh, room gets, how many trades are taken, how fast, slow the trades do, and if they fit your preferred trading style. Myself, I like to get in, out quick. If price doesn't move in my direction right away, I want to get out of the trade. That's my style. That's how I like to trade. Uh, I do. I am a little more patient on bonds. Uh, what is the profit and loss 
at the end of five days. Uh, what I do in the room is I will keep track of what the, the, the guru is, is making, uh, what he has up, how many trades he's taken, did I take the same trades. I'm a little more on advanced side so I can take the same trades that he is if I know the setup uh, and I want to compare. Uh, that's how I get my, uh, how I look at it. Uh, yeah, if they, if they even post or show their uh, profit loss at the end of the uh, session, uh, that's good. Write that number down. You keep track of that. That's the way that you can find out what they're doing. I don't really go into how many trades I've taken, uh, but I can. Uh, I just look at how much I've got uh, at the end of the day, of the end of that particular room. That's what I'm looking at. Uh, you should now have a good feel for which room is the best for you at this time. Again, give it five days in the room. Uh, sometimes you can find out pretty quick that it is the right fit, but give it five days uh, and then uh, write down uh, certain things, how much you made. Uh, if he took a uh, 10 tick loss, note that. Then add it up together to see if it adds up with what, what he shows or it doesn't show. Uh, sometimes I may not show it, but I tell them out because uh, I'm looking at charts that have it set up uh, what it has. Uh, I was up. I don't remember what I was up when I closed the room. Uh, just barely out of paying the broker's fee. Uh, I had was I, I was green, but it was just a little bit uh, a little bit more than what the broker got. A broker got a, a good chunk of it today. Uh, we're talking a little over twenty dollars. So. Uh, be your own reviewer. There are websites that review trading rooms, or you might see feedback uh, for a room online. Uh, take a third party uh, reviews with a grain of salt. Uh, the reviewer has his own bias and expectations and probably don't match yours. Uh, they may attend a room on a bad day, a uh, bad week, or they just coming in on the free set, the free sessions and uh, try to get things that uh, the paid viewer has to get. So uh, take the third party uh, with a grain of salt. Go ahead, look at them, and uh, just be your own reviewer. You make up your mind on it. Uh, the third parties can help you out. Uh, make up your own mind. Track records, trust but verify. Not all rooms offer track records, and that's okay. Uh, track records are notoriously unreliable. I could care less about someone's track record. I don't care what they did last month, last year, last week. Uh, yesterday I do care about and what's going on today. Personally, I could care less about a track record. Uh, they are not very, uh, they are very unreliable. Uh, many rooms use uh, spreadsheets instead of income reports straight out of their trading platform. Spreadsheets can be easily manipulated and skew the truth. Strategies that work great in the past may not work as well in the present because the market evolves. Does not mean that it won't come back. <clears throat> Whether a trade room does or doesn't have a track record, uh, verify yourself whether the trades you see in the room are working today in today's market. That's what I want to see. Yeah, Joe. Uh, that's what I want to see. I want to know what's going on today, every day that I'm in that particular room. Uh, so that's how I go about it. If you can verify that for yourself due to uh, due to Completed uh, instructors don't own or not understand the trade yet. Don't un don't worry about that. Uh, to uh, ask to hear from other traders is a good one in that are in the room that are current uh, currently successful. So verify that. See if you can't get somebody's uh, uh, what they think about the room. What they think about the uh, person that's trading. Learn a trade. Just go over the strategy material from the beginning to end. Take notes on each section or video. I take notes of what I liked and what I don't understand, 
so I can go back later and review them to make sure I write down, uh, make sure to write down uh, how to find that part again. And what I do is I usually uh, will take the counter uh, where it's at on the video so I can go back to it pretty quick. Uh, try to watch and listen uh, without uh, personal bias. Uh, you may learn something, even at the beginning, even if it's something that you've already gone over and you know. But I, I'll start right from the beginning. Uh, even how they set their charts up, how they use their Ninja platform. Uh, that's another thing. I like going into rooms that use the platform that I am currently using. Keep track of which sections of the videos uh, that that uh, that teaches you something um, uh, that you already know, you can write down uh, if you, excuse me, <laughs> I guess I've, I'm watching a, a CL up right above me and it's distracting me. <laughs> I should keep get that chart down. Uh, keep track of what sections and videos uh, teach something that you already know so you can write down and not waste time going over those videos either. Uh, some of the sections that will have uh, section one, uh, introduction, you might not have to go through that again. Uh, chart setup, you might know how to do that. So just make sure that you know what videos that you don't want to go to or find that timeline. Uh, now go over uh, back over the material with your notes in hand without a distraction so you can focus. Uh, you take more notes. Choose your favorite setup at your current level. Use Market Replay to practice the trade in simulation. For more information on Market Replay, watch Power Trade episode number two. Backtest the trades using historical data. More for our, on backtesting, watch Power Trade episode three. And do mar more Market Replay. Practice the trade at least 100 times in simulation, Market Replay. Uh, if it's good, if it's a good fit for you and you feel you have the results down, consider going live. When going live, if at all possible, trade other people's money first, uh, top step, uh, before risking your own account. Go into that, it, it's, really a, it's really a money saver. <laughs> um, make the trades your own. Write down the rules for the trade in your own words. Keep it as simple as possible. Use a journal to take and take screenshots uh, of successful and unsuccessful trades and try to understand why they did or did not work. I do this uh, daily, whether I do it right at the time of the trade or I go back and I'll, I'll make it so I can see all trades. Uh, but I am taking notes of the trades, so I know where I have to go to of trades that work, trades that didn't work, uh, trades that I tighten up, and I want to know why I'm tightening up. I know why I'm tightening them up. Uh, but I, I write it down anyway, and that goes into a journal. The snapshots of the trades help to see that if I'm consistently uh, doing the right or wrong thing. Uh, try make small tweaks one at a time uh, to the setup and keep track of, reserve, uh, of the results. Uh, that might be, uh, uh, say you want to um, front run or you have a trade that is setting up on a, on a breakout, uh, but it, it likes to pop up two or three ticks above your breakout level and then uh, pull back down uh, three ticks, maybe the tweak would be placing that four ticks higher so it doesn't get you in to a, a, get a, a pullback or the same way as the price comes up if you're trying to fade the trade. You might want to front run it. You might want to go above like where somebody would be putting a breakout. Uh, EMAs would be the same way. Maybe you need to front run an EMA or set it behind the EMA. Uh, that's, that's the type of tweaking uh, that I would do. Analyze your results over at least two week period and keep the changes that work best for you. Uh, get help. Uh, the point of a trade room is to help you become a better trader. Don't be a hero and don't try to learn without 
feedback. Ask for help in the room when you need it. If you have a question, uh, so do other, uh, 10 other people in the room. Now, if you feel overwhelmed, take a time out. Uh, that will happen, and it happens quite often where you, you just get overwhelmed, nothing's working, you need to take some time out. Uh, whether it be uh, 15 minutes, an hour, or take a couple of days off, uh, maybe a, a longer weekend, whatever. But that overwhelming feeling uh, can eat you up. What not to do? Don't jump around from room to room. Once you've chosen a room, stick with it for at least 30 days and give it an honest chance. Don't jump around from one setup to another. Uh, set up to set up. Choose the right one for you and master it. Uh, don't skip any lessons the first time around. The second time around you can, but not that first time. I want you to watch everything uh, right from the beginning. Don't start at the advanced level even if you are already an advanced trader because you might miss something that is needed to get to that level of their room. Uh, don't trade live until you have the system down and you have done your own testing. Don't rely on somebody else's testing. You have to do it yourself. Don't go into the room just to shadow trade. Very dangerous. Shadow trading is fine when learning, but should never be done at the end goal. When shadow trading, try to understand why each level, uh, each trade was taken at those entry levels and exits. Don't try to trade every setup that the moderator takes. He might be—he might have different setups that you don't do not know. So unless you understand the setup, don't take it. Don't be don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, it's getting really close to the time for the time trade here, and so let's take a look at the chart. I uh, hope you got something out of that to find the room. We did have oil inventory today. This uh, was, I did uh, the uh, oil trade on a uh, on another account today, and I got 200 on that. Uh, this year, uh, last trade here uh, that I took today, uh, after the room was a bond trade that got me, uh, that helped me get that 223.75. Took it at a 50% uh, retracement. Okay, it was a short. We have the two o'clock setting up. Let's see, we've been going up since, uh, well, 7.30. News was good. It didn't even turn around and come back. I had it set out for one contract for 20 ticks and it got it. This is the account I was working on this morning in my uh, trade room. And let's do this. I think this thing is going to want to pop up here and then drop. We'll do a bracket here. You have 40 seconds. I don't want to drop this in until the last about 10 seconds. Yeah, Rich. <laughs> uh, oil, I only took one, one contract. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, he had three in. He, he ended up getting 800. See, my ATM is seven. I'm going to move that to five pretty quick. Nope, I didn't get any slippage. My target was uh, entry was out far enough where it uh, hit, pulled back a little bit, got in, and uh, I don't, I think he might have gotten some positive slippage. He had a different entry, it was closer than mine.
I, uh, Rich, you, I think he was uh, in the, the same room uh, with us at uh, 1030. Uh, the cat, the cat wants in. <laughs> he likes getting up on the keyboard and, uh, and playing with the mouse. Wow, this is pretty slow today. Two minutes and still not into the trade. I see one thing I don't have. I don't have an OCO out. There. I'll take this trade all the way to 245, Rich. I'm going to come up with at least one tick, but I also want to try to get, take it down to a swing here maybe. This consolidated area right here, there's three ticks, and then I just might take five. I don't like the volume spike right there. I can't really see what I've got. There's uh keep tightening it up. Let's keep going. I'll get three ticks, no less. It's just like the open. Yep. Just like the open. Look like today you could have done it at one o'clock, uh, one thirty. There's nine ticks. Let's make this a good one. Come on down. I'm going to lock in some more. Hasn't hit 10 ticks. It's all right. If I get taken out, I'm happy. I'd like to see it come back down another tick. If it pulls down one more tick, I'm going to tighten it up here right at the top of this candle. There we go. There's nine. I'm going to lock in some more. Eight, seven, there's nine, go down to 10, I'll lock in eight. There we go. I'm happy with that. Nice. I like to see these come down with no pullback. Uh, if you take a look, uh, if you go back, Richard, you can go back and take a look. Uh, I don't know uh, when they actually stopped trading. Four, uh, four thirty is when they actually stopped trading. But if you go back, what I normally find is at uh, two o'clock, he likes to flatten out. Here we have uh, two thirty, two forty-five, rather, and see the see how flat it got here. And then it dropped off at six. I uh, know uh, a group of uh, four guys trade all the way up to uh, four o'clock. Uh, they, they would have taken this trade here. But I don't want to stay here. Uh, this is too long. It's way too long for me. Okay, Luke. Come on in. He usually gets tired of it and just goes away. 
the the close for that uh i would just i just stop at uh 245 would be the latest that i'd stick around I'm, i want to be done yeah i let the cat in who let the cat out <laughs> I need to get it its own computer. <laughs> so, Rich, do you understand the trade at two o'clock? It's just it's, it would be just like using the open uh, uh, for the time trade at nine o'clock. Same indicator. Yeah, it looks like I did pretty good by getting out where I did. No problem there. Anybody take the trade? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Bob got eight ticks. Very good. So all together, uh, not including the uh, fees, uh, let's say I just made $200 here, paid the, uh, didn't pay the broker $93, but just let's say that. I'm up uh, uh, $400.75. Uh, $400 Let's just say I did pay him $93. Now, this trade, you could take this trade again at uh, possibly nine, uh, 215. Look for a, a, a setup at 215 and maybe even at uh, 230. Yeah, Richard, you're right. I was hoping to make coffee money. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Well, you were there. You've seen it. It's up, down, all around. I think I was down more than I was up, but I, I wasn't down a lot at any one time. Uh, we already did that, so let's head on to the next part three here of the Mastermind Wins, Lessons Learned, and Q&A. Mastermind Wins, what was your best trade so far this past week? If you have a microphone, let me know. I'll unmute you. Otherwise, type it into the chat box. This year was my single best trade uh, taken on the ninth. That was yesterday. Two contracts, both targets were hit. Uh, I think I got out with nine. Eighteen. Nice. That was a, that was a real nice trade. That was nice, nice setup. And you can see that was done. Uh, got in the trade. It's a six ten trade setup. And this is the candle that I actually got in on. I should have put the uh, show trades up on that. That's where I actually got in on this this trade. So anybody have a, a single best trade of the week? Yeah, Monday was a, a I, I, I didn't take that either. <laughs> 20 plus on uh, gold on Monday at the open. Fred, did you have any good trades this 
this past week, even going into last week. Well, we were off last week. So nobody had any good trades this week. There were some real good trades last week. Last week, you could have just put a short in on CL anywhere. Just, just get in. <laughs> Uh, what did you learn this week uh, that would benefit other traders? If you have a microphone, again, let me know, and I'll unmute you. Otherwise, just type it into the chat box. Uh, I learned a couple of things. Uh, Saturday, I was working on my computer, and I had a complete uh, computer meltdown. Uh, Dan helped me out. I was able to get some of the stuff off my uh, external hard drive that backs up by itself, but it's, it wasn't recent. So now I'm going to start backing up uh, the new computer on a weekly basis. Now the problem that I have with uh, my external hard drive is that I can't run that. It can't keep backing up if, if I'm running uh, Ninja. So I have to disable it, and I've, I come in every morning and do it, so it never really gets a chance to back up unless I come in on a weekend uh, that I don't uh, – put Ninja chart up, happen to turn it on and let it run through a uh, backup. Uh, he sent me a link for a cloud service. Uh, I'll be looking into that. I uh, want to back up everything that I have. And uh, that's making me more be more aware of I need to back that stuff up. Never really thought about it. Before, usually I'm, I'm ready to get a new computer. I've never had one do what this one did. Um, and another thing uh, is if, you're, if you have a trailer that you have a load of dirt on and you have it unhooked from your vehicle, and the trailer is, is loaded pretty heavy, so if you're starting to take uh, dirt off from it, from the front of the trailer. Uh, just remember that once the front gets light and uh, there's more weight in the back, the tongue will come up off the ground. And it's possibly a chance for that trailer to roll downhill into the neighbor's yard across the road. Uh, so block your tires on a tra <laughs> trailer. <laughs> That's probably... That was probably that was the funniest thing I seen watching my trailer go across the road and into the neighbor's yard with uh, two yards of dirt on it. Block those tires. <laughs> Lesson of the week: uh, backing up the computer on a week at no less than a weekly uh, basis, uh, so that if you do happen to lose everything, you have something that you can fall back on. The hard drive is being worked on right now. It was a solid state hard drive, and there was a lot of stuff that fried out in the hard drive itself. I don't understand it all, don't care. Got somebody to take care of that for me. Uh, yeah, they could use the fill. It went, it, the tongue dug right into their, it made a ditch in their, uh, in their yard. <laughs> it was funny. Watching the neighbors, the neighbors was watching it going off, and they were going, oh, my <laughs> so I was walking out towards it as it was crossing the road. Uh, I wasn't going to get in front of it. I knew I couldn't stop it. <laughs> in my room, what do I take? I take 610 trades, which is a... Oops. Uh, I use a 610 chart. It's a, a particular setup that I have using a 610 chart. I'll go back to the slide here. Uh, just because it has a 610 
uh, tick chart does not mean that I take it off a 610 tick. It's, th th that was just the name of the trade setup that I had uh, for it because I started out with a 610 on it. There's a setup here. There's a London swing trade that happens prior to the market open. Uh, that's similar to it. I use tick charts on that. Uh, time trades like what we just did here. This particular time trade, I take volume spike trades where you have the volume come up, but I have to be concentrating on the volume spikes. What would be a good setting for a range chart? Uh, three range, uh, three, four. Uh, what are, let me ask you this. What are you trading? A three range is a good chart to trade off from. Yes, uh, six range is what I would use. St go for a three and a six. Uh, I don't know how what your personality is. Do you like to watch it go faster or slower? Uh, take, the, take a six range and a three range. You can put them side by side. I'll put the indicators on that you like on both of them. And then uh, you can get a feel of which one that uh, one's going to move, of course, faster, twice as fast. The six is going to move twice as slow as a three. That's what I would start out with. Ranko, I don't know what I would use for a Ranko, Scott. Uh, I don't have Ranko bars. I used to use them but I don't remember what the settings were on those. I'd have to do some digging on that. Uh, what would be a good setting for the range chart? Got that. Uh, if you would take one course from Winvesting, which one would you take? I know you can't take them all, 610 trade. That's my personal favorite. 610, no, I'll take that back. 610 or the London Swing. They're one about, they're almost the same. Uh, what's the best source to learn Ninja? Uh, the best source to learn Ninja would be Ninja videos themselves. YouTube is, is they have them on YouTube also. Uh, some guys put out some excellent uh, videos on NinjaTrader, how to use NinjaTrader outside of NinjaTrader themselves. But to get the basics down, uh, there we have a lot of the uh, trades, uh, the stuff in uh, investing that go over of uh, Ninja Trader. Uh, the best way that I found was going in and uh, watching someone use it, asking questions at the appropriate time, of course, uh, on how something works. And I did a lot of hands-on going through the chart and finding out what everything did. The shortcuts that I like, uh, like say I want to change this here to a, this one minute chart to a five minute chart. I don't want to have to go around. All I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a five minute chart. All I'm going to hit is five M on the keyboard, hit enter. And I have a five minute chart. If I want a, a three range, three R. And there I have a three range. It's quick. Learning the uh, keys like that, uh, I still haven't learned the uh, shortcuts on the toolbar, which would really help me out a lot. If I want to go to a uh, 200 tick, right, 200 T, and we have the tick chart. I'm going to go back to a one minute, hit enter. YouTube is a good place too. Oh, it depend, now if you want to look for something uh, in particular, the, what I do is type that in and then look for the video. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Open high, open low, close. Yeah, I'll have to go back and fix that.
All right. So remember, anybody have any other lessons learned? Feed the cat before I come into the trade room. Well, what can we help clarify that will help you be a better futures trader? Again, if you have a microphone, let me know, and I'll unmute you. Otherwise, just type it in. Uh, I think we covered the uh, Ninja, how to learn that would be a good one. Uh, out of investing, I personally like the uh, Lennon Swing and uh, 610 trade. Uh, that's where I would go. Time trades. Uh, if you have a particular time uh, that you're looking at, uh, that's also a good one. But where I would start would be the 610 or and or London swing. All right. Nobody have anything. Anybody have any questions other that we have discussed already or anything else? I'll bring that. Uh, gold chart back over here and I'm going to fix that. Indicator. Oh, yes, this is being recorded. That's not what I want. I need to go to data series. Candle outline, make that white. And white. And I have my candles back. We have a range here. It's possible to let's use the box here. There would have been the short right here coming down. Possibly look for a bounce here to pop back up or a breakout below 50 at 49 maybe. Tap 50, then we're going down. You see the indicator set up, setting up for a, a 9.30 or a 2.30 trade. Uh, it'll be sent out. Uh, the, the video will be sent out. Uh, we'll wait around for it. I want to see what's going to happen here. I might do it. Uh, I might do it. Pushing down like this, I prefer to see a long. Settling out, selling off, and yeah, I'd like to see it come up. It may not. It might continue all the way back down, uh, finish the day off. Uh, back here at 10.30. We look for it possibly dropping down to there. More likely at uh, 47.10. We'll stick around for that. A lot of volume right here, which I don't particularly care for on this candle here. And that candle didn't move much. Not, not like this one here did. Another way that I could take this trade, shrink this up just a little bit so I can see. It's already hit there. 
let's put a line right here. One down there. And all I'm doing is catching these swings. I like to fade that that swing here, right there at uh, 64. And possibly down here at uh, 47.40. And I will risk four ticks. We'll keep it at 10. You could do this for a breakout. I don't know which one's going to work. You could use the uh, 230 breakout, one tick above here, one tick above the high. One to two ticks above the high. Oops. Let's straighten that out. One to two ticks below at the low here. Let's just take this the regular way. We'll go ahead and stage the order out. The regular way, what I mean is one tick above the high, one tick below the low. I'd like to see it at least tap this. Coming down to heading down to here, this level here. Look at that volume, it's pumping up. Hey, Ian, how'd you do today? I'm only risking four ticks. Want to see that pull back a little bit? It was a one-to-one. -one. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. I hope you got uh, some use out of uh, what I had covered today. Next week is going to be a, I feel, is going to be a real good one. Uh, I plan on doing how to dig yourself out of a hole. And yeah, not the kind that you dig with a shovel. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me. Uh, wait a minute. I've got some more slides. Let's finish those. Next step, where to go from here. Review the, your notes and take uh, action at least on uh, one thing you've learned. Uh, visit us at www.investing.com. Check out the profitability path. 
send uh, in your feedback and suggestions for future episodes to support at winvesting.com. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, I took the 230, Richard. Shouldn't have been on the phone, man. <laughs> thanks, Lois. I, I got four ticks out of it. Show you. I show you. Thirty target to twenty six. Took it like the uh, uh, nine o'clock trade, two o'clock trade, eight o'clock trade. Took it just like those, man. <laughs> if I'm here, uh, Lois, if I'm sitting around here for it, a lot of times I'm out doing something else and. Uh, uh, I don't hear my uh, phone go off uh, 10 minutes prior. I try to get in and do it. I like it. I find that the uh, trade on uh, Wednesdays works very well. No, I, I don't just take it for you guys. I do take it when I'm around. I just happen to be here uh, at Wednesday at this time. Knowing that I have to be here makes it even better. <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, if they had this, the app with Ninja on uh, a cell phone, I'd take it there. I <laughs> uh, thank everybody again. Thanks for uh, joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Catch you around. Thanks a lot. Bye. Nice to end up with 33375 at the end of the day. Everybody have a great one. Bye. Hey Rich, that's the way to come out from uh just being barely making coffee money. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>